Parents know it's a problem, teachers know it's a problem, and hundreds of school districts say the social media companies know it's a problem too, but they refuse to fix it. Well, that's the subject of a lawsuit now filed last year, and as we wait for the case to play out in court, WMAR 2 Elizabeth Worthington is taking an in-focus look tonight at the impact of screen time on our students right here in Maryland. Middle school is hard enough. From fractions to bullying, kids have a lot of things competing for their attention. Now imagine they also have to contend with mega corporations preying on their still developing brains to get them addicted to an app that will likely cause emotional harm, maybe even physical harm. Because that's exactly what hundreds of school districts across the country say is happening, and they're trying to put an end to it. This is unfair. It's not a level playing field. It is not fair to do this to our kids. That was Matthew Hornbeck. He's the principal at Hampstead Hill Academy in Baltimore. Baltimore City Schools and several other school districts in Maryland joined a nationwide class action lawsuit against the big social media companies like Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. The lawsuit alleges those companies intentionally designed their platforms and algorithms to target kids and get them hooked. The school systems blame these social media giants for contributing to the mental health crisis among their students. Increased rates of eating disorders, depression, anxiety, even suicidal thoughts. The companies aren't designed to help us. Mm -hmm. They're designed for clicks and ads, and that's substantively antithetical to what we're doing in schools. It's been 21 years of being a principal at the same school, and I've really seen the arc of so the rise of social media and it's just awful. It's gotten worse and worse and worse. Hey, Austin, you all right? Yeah. Okay. Here at Hampstead Hill, which teaches kids from pre-K to eighth grade, the school's mental health resources are in overdrive, and it's still not enough. There's guidance counselors, social workers, psychologists, and clinicians on staff. They are working harder than they have at any time in the past. It is just a tsunami of need that uh, right now, whether you're in the city or the county, can't be met. Social media isn't going anywhere. School systems want the companies to change their policies, but in the meantime, what are people like Principal Hornbeck doing to protect their students? I think that when second graders started showing up with, with phones, then it, it dawned on me that we're going to have a problem. So he found a solution. This school year, Hampstead Hill rolled out a new policy. Students under fourth grade can't bring phones into school at all. Kids from fourth to eighth grade were provided with something called a yonder pouch. They put their phone in the pouch like that, and then they close it, and then it can't open, and then they're in charge of keeping this. They can put it wherever they want. They can put it in their backpack, and then in the afternoon, we have uh, five of these unlocking stations. You go and you just unlock it, and then you can open it and take the phone out, and then you start over the next morning. So far, Hornbeck says it's working. He points to a success story told by his assistant principal who supervises recess. And this group of um, eighth grade girls uh, last year when they were in seventh grade checking their social media and, and um, just kind of buried in their phones even on a beautiful day outside. And this year, instead of saying, put your phone away or turn your phone off or you shouldn't have that on, he watches them play volleyball together and just be kids. So there's hope, but schools right. still need help. The biggest concern I have right now is that social media would remain unchecked and that, uh, that we will have a generation not just lost to the pandemic, but that we would continue not recognizing what damage is being done to our kids uh, by these social media companies. In Baltimore, Elizabeth Worthington, WMAR 2 News.